Good morning and welcome to today's New York City Council hearing for the Committees on Transportation and Infrastructure, joint with Public Safety. At this time, we ask that you silence all cell phones and electronic devices to minimize disruption throughout the hearing. If you have testimony you wish to submit for the record, you may do so via email at testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that is testimony at council.nyc.gov. At any time throughout the hearing, please do not approach the dais. We thank you for your cooperation. Chairs, we are ready to begin. Good morning. I am Council Member Camila Hanks, Chair on the Committee of Public Safety. Welcome to today's joint oversight hearing on enforcement of defaced, fraudulent, and expired license plates. I am joined by committee members Williams, Carr, Kagan, De La Rosa, Lewis, Ariola, Lee, Farias, Joseph, Palladino, Felix, and Chair Brooks Powers. At this hearing, we will also be considering three pieces of legislation in the Public Safety Committee, Introduction 987, sponsored by Councilmember Felice, a bill to, that was to create a new enforcement authority to prohibit the operation of a motor vehicle with fraudulent or expired license plates. Introduction 988, also sponsored by Councilmember Felice, legislation to create new penalties for the sale or distribution of fraudulent license plates. Introduction 1011, sponsored by Chair Brooks Powers, to provide information on reduced fare programs to individuals arrested or summoned for fare evasion. I would like to take this time to thank my colleagues, Councilmember Brooks Powers, Chair on the Committee of Transportation and Infrastructure, and our staff for their hard work in putting together this hearing. As a city, we must work proactively to address the widespread use of defaced, fraudulent, and expired license plates. This illegal behavior poses significant risk to our communities, and we are here today to closely examine NYPD's strategies in combating this pressing problem. Fraudulent license plates allow individuals to evade law enforcement tolls and speed enforcement cameras. cameras. This, is not this not only undermines the integrity of our transportation systems, but it also fosters an environment where criminal activity and reckless driving can flourish unchecked. At this hearing, we will examine the effectiveness of current enforcement strategies, evaluate resources allocated for combating this issue, and identifying areas in which improvement is needed. When defaced, fraudulent, and expired license plates become rampant in our communities, our streets become less safe, and we forego a vital tax revenue. I look forward to hearing today's testimony from the administration and how we can collaborate to improve traffic safety, alleviate financial strain to our citizens, and more importantly, uphold the integrity of our transportation systems. Thank you all for being here, and now I'll turn it over to Chair Brooks Powers for her opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's joint hearing on, of the Committee on Public Safety and the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. Today's hearing continues a crucial ongoing conversation about how the city can improve street safety, eliminate traffic violence, and realize Vision Zero. Our speed and red light cameras do not work when they cannot read a license plate number. That restricts their ability to do what they are designed to do, reduce speeding and reckless driving. Those who deface or distort or otherwise use fraudulent plates know this and are operating outside of the law. We cannot continue to let them. Both the state and city have sought to address this issue legislatively. In October of 2021, the state enacted a law to increase the maximum penalty of license plate obstruction to a $300 fine. And, a, and in January of 2022, the city enacted Local Law 22, which prohibited the sale or distribution of materials that obscure license plates or distort images on license plates. That law created a fine schedule of $300 for the first violation and at least $500 for any subsequent violation. In recent years, the NYPD has been issuing more tickets and making more arrests for fraudulent or defaced license plates. But simple observation of our road shows that the problem of such license plates remains. 
If we do not do more to address the problem, we risk undermining the very effective programs that this city has set up to keep our streets safe. The first is our red light camera program, operationalized in 1994 as the first such program in the nation. The red light camera program allows the city to operate cameras at 150 locations throughout the city. The second is our automated speed enforcement camera program, which has been in place since 2013. As of 2019, the state enabled the city to place speed enforcement cameras 700 in 750 school speed zones and codified into DOT's practice of using data to guide installations at locations where the greatest impact on preventing injury and death could be realized. The effect of these enforcement programs has been clear. Consider the speed camera. Through December 2021, speeding at fixed camera locations had dropped on average 73%. These results led to the state led the state to authorize an expansion of operating camera hours to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. From August 1st, 2022 to December 20th, 2022, according to the New York City Comptroller's Office, New York City's 24-7 speed camera programs has issued nearly 3 million violations, and the city has received nearly $100 million from fines paid during that time. None of those fines, however, were assessed on drivers who obscure their license plates or have obtained them fraudulently. The fact is, that fact is unfair to drivers who do the, follow the law, and it is dangerous for all road users who are forced to share the road with these drivers who operate with relative impunity. I look forward to questioning the administration today on the enforcement of laws prohibiting fraudulent defaced and expired license plates, gaining more up-to-date statistics on the issue, exploring how we can partner with other states to establish a more uniform system of enforcement and working together to ensure a reduction in use of those so-called ghost plates. In addition to the oversight portion of today's hearing, I'm excited that we will hear several bills relevant to this issue. I'm proud to be co-prime sponsor on introduction number 987 and 988, which would, include, which would increase civil fines for driving with fake license plates and for selling or distributing fraudulent plates. I thank Council Member Felice for his leadership on this issue. I am also excited to hear my bill, introduction number 1011, which would require NYPD officers patrolling in subway stations to carry flyers with information about the fair fare, um, fair fares, about what fair fares is, who is eligible, and how to apply. These officers would be required to give those flyers only, only, to any individual who receives a summons or is arrested for fair evasion in the subway. At a time when too many are criminalized just because they cannot pay the fare, the administration should at least be required to take proactive steps to spread more information about the fair fares program. I note that the council is fighting hard to ensure this year's budget includes an expansion of the city's fair fares program to ensure more residents in need can ride at a reduced rate. I look forward to hearing from the administration, advocates, and members of the public regarding the oversight and legislation at this hearing. I want to thank my staff and committee staff as well for their hard work. Samuel Breitbart, counsel to the committee. Mark Chen, counsel to the committee. Kevin Katowski, senior policy analyst. John Basile, senior policy analyst. Michael Sherman, senior financial analyst, Jack Siegenthaler, my policy and budget director, and Renee Taylor, my chief of staff. I also want to thank the Public Safety Committee staff on their work as well. Um, with that, we will now hear from Council Member Felis on intro numbers 987 and 988. All right, uh, good morning everyone. I'm Council Member Oswald Felis. Uh, thank you, Chairs uh, Hanks and Sylvina Brooks Powers for this hearing. Uh, and I'll say what we all know, paper plates have created new issues for the city of New York, issues related to ghost cars, ghost cars that cannot be easily traced and identified, 
and ghost cars that are being used uh, to evade our rules and laws without accountability, including our traffic laws, such as speeding rules and red light camera rules, but also to, uh, being used to commit major crimes. Uh, these ghost cars and these paper plates are costing us our safety, but they're also costing us resources. The MTA every single year loses tens of millions of dollars every single year through toll evasion due to these fake plates. This is a huge issue. People are using these fake plates very openly. People are also selling these plates very openly. I went on Craigslist yesterday and saw individuals advertising fake plates from Georgia and Jersey, uh, 30, 45 day plates with allegedly with insurance for $150. So this is a huge issue that people are engaging in very openly. Uh, we need to fully resolve this issue, and this is an issue that can be best resolved by the federal government, given that it involves rules um, for, related to, for example, printing plates in Georgia and Texas and New Jersey. However, there is a lot that the city of New York can do to tackle this issue and to discourage people from selling and using these plates uh, to, and hopefully discouraging individuals from engaging in this conduct. Uh, so I want to thank our chairs for this hearing, and I look forward to talking about the systems that, that we have in place uh, to tackle this issue and talk about ways uh, of improving these systems. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Council Member Felice. I also want to thank uh, Chair Brooks Powers. I want to recognize that we are joined virtually by Council Member Caban and Council Member Holden, and we've also been joined in the committee chambers by Council Member Narcisse. Now I'll pass it along to the committee council to administer the oath and swear in the witnesses. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, from the administration today, we have with us from the NYPD, Chief Pilecki, Commanding Officer of the Transportation Bureau, Deputy Chief Kinsella, Executive Officer of the Patrol Service Bureau, Julianne Fargulia, the Managing Attorney of the Legislative Affairs Unit, from DOT, we have Josh Benson, Deputy Commissioner of Traffic Operations. From the Department of Finance, we have Maureen Kokius, the Director of the Office of Tax Enforcement. And from DSS, we have Marika Scott McFadden, Deputy Commissioner of Intergovernmental and Legislative Affairs. If you could all please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee and respond honestly to council member questions? Seeing all witnesses answer in the affirmative, uh, we can begin testimony in which order, whatever order you prefer. Good morning, Chair Hanks, Chair Brooks Powers, and members of the Council. I am Deputy Chief Michael Pilecki, the Executive Officer of the New York City Transportation Bureau, NYPD's Transportation Bureau. I'm joined here today by Deputy Chief Tanya Kinsella, Executive Officer of the Patrol Services Bureau, Juliana Faraguglia, Managing Attorney of the Legislative Affairs Unit, along with our colleagues Josh Benson, Deputy Commissioner of Traffic Operations with the Department of Transportation, Marika Scott McFadden, Deputy Commissioner of Inter Intergovernmental and Legislative Affairs with the Department of Social Services, and Maureen Kokeas, Director of the Office of Tax Enforcement with the Department of Finance. On behalf of Police Commissioner Kichan Sewell, I'm here to testify before your committees on the proliferation of fraudulent and expired license plates throughout the city and the department's efforts to combat their use. One of the many unforeseen consequences of the pandemic was the increase in the use of temporary paper license plates, particularly the plates seemingly issued by other states. The COVID lockdowns forced DMVs in every state to close for longer periods than expected. This required repeated extensions of the expiration date of registrations and license plates, which also relaxed enforcement on paper tags. Whether due to complacency on the part of drivers, a willingness to take the risks or as a means of giving cars untraceable anonymity during violent crimes, we continue to see the number of expired plates outpacing pre-pandemic levels. Many out-of-state DMVs are still allowing the online registration of motor vehicles with the printing of temporary paper plates. This has unfortunately enabled a black market in the printing and sale of temporary license plates, leading to rampant fraud. 
Any vehicle bearing one of these fraudulent plates instantly becomes undetectable to nearly every aspect of street level enforcement, from tolls to speed and red light cameras and even parking enforcement. They become ghost cars to the system and evade enforcement on a widespread scale. For example, these cars often park illegally in bike and bus lanes, in crosswalks, and at hydrants causing hazardous conditions for pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers alike. These cars are also involved in hit and runs of both pedestrians and other motorists, leaving innocent bystanders injured and without recourse. Summonses issued to these vehicles are unenforceable, and scofflaws know that, often leaving towing as the only effective countermeasure. For that reason, the department continues to prioritize vehicles with temporary paper license plates for towing. Despite the outbreak of fraudulent and covered plates, the department remains undeterred in its efforts to prevail I'm sorry, to prevent these scoff laws from continuing to plague our streets. Last year, we issued 258,000 summonses to vehicles with covered or obstructed plates, arrested nearly 4,200 drivers for forged or altered plates, and seized 7,520 cars that had fraudulent paper plates or were parked illegally, illegally while displaying a temporary paper plate. So far this year, we've already issued over 130,000 summonses to vehicles with covered or obstructed plates, arrested 1,777 drivers for forged or altered plates, and towed over 1,100 vehicles this year for obstructed or covered plates. We're also continuing our education outreach to auto parts stores throughout the city to ensure compliance with legislation recently passed by the council that prohibits the sale of plate covers. The use of fraudulent plates goes beyond parking, speeding, and toll evasion. Their use by recidivist criminals poses another threat to public safety. Savvy criminals have learned that ghost cars can help make them ghost perpetrators. We have connected fraudulent and counterfeit paper license plates to murders and armed robberies, as well as any number of violent crimes. We have even seen the same plate fleeing the scene of separate crimes, but on different cars. Of the 1,777 arrests made so far this year where the paper license plate was forged, the top charge was criminal possession of a weapon in 13 of the arrests, criminal possession of a controlled substance in 37 arrests, criminal possession of stolen property in 14 arrests, DWI in nine arrests, and grand larceny auto in seven arrests. Addressing these issues is a daily focus for the NYPD and the administration. That's why last year, Mayor Adams announced the formation of the Vehicle License Plate Working Group, which joins together members from the NYPD, DOT, MTA, the Port Authority, the Triborough Bridge and Tunnel Authority, State Police, the Sheriffs, and District Attorneys for strategy sessions. The goal is to apply shared knowledge to attack the problem from every possible angle, using a holistic approach to each challenge posed by flouting the license plate and registration laws. Administration-wide focus on this wide-ranging problem, as well as our collaboration with law enforcement and motor vehicle departments in other states, will continue to enable the department to quickly and effectively identify these fraudulent plates and get these cars and the criminals who use them off the streets. I would now like to turn to the bills being heard today. Intro 987, would prohibit the operation of a motor vehicle bearing fraudulent or expired license plates, including fraudulent or expired temporary plates. The bill creates a civil penalty returnable to the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings for fraudulent plates of $500 for the first offense and $1,000 for any subsequent offenses, and a civil penalty for expired plates of $300 for the first offense and $500 for any subsequent offenses, which are higher than the penalties imposed under the New York State Vehicle and Traffic Law. Intro 988 would prohibit the sale or distribution of fraudulent license plates, including, including fraudulent temporary plates. The bill creates a civil penalty returnable to oath of not less than $1,000 for the first violation and not less than $2,000 for any subsequent offense. The administration certainly welcomes any additional tools to combat the use of fraudulent and expired plates especially temporary plates, and looks forward to working with the council and sponsors on ways we can assist in promoting this important program. Intro 1011 would require officers assigned to patrol any subway station to carry flyers created by the Department of Social Services, Human Rights Administration, 
regarding reduced fare programs offered by the city and to distribute them to each individual who was arrested or summoned for theft of services, trespass, criminal trespass, or fare evasion. The department supports equitable fare programs that encourage legal entry into the transit system and looks forward to working with the council and the sponsor on the most effective way to achieve the bill's goals. Thank you for the opportunity to testify about these important issues, and we look forward to answering any questions that you may have. Thank you so much. I appreciate your testimony. So we're going to jump right into the questions. So in 2002, the council enacted Local Law 22, which relates to the unlawful sale of materials that obscure license plates. How has the city implemented this law, and has there been an increase of enforcement by NYPD since this law was enacted? There has, and there's a few things that we've been doing to address this issue. Um, I'll first start by saying, and laying a little groundwork, the Transportation Bureau holds weekly traffic safety forum meetings which is similar to the CompStat meetings that the department holds to reduce crime. Each week, the Chief of Transportation and myself host the executives from a particular borough, which would be all the precinct executive officers. So for example, if we were going to hold a meeting with the Bronx commanders, all the executive officers of the Bronx precincts would come down to headquarters, along with the one-star chief from the borough, the executive officer, who was responsible for the borough's traffic safety plan. At those meetings, we discuss each precinct's traffic safety plan. We discuss the statistics regarding collisions with injuries, pedestrians, bicyclists, fatalities, and we ensure that the precincts are focused on uh, addressing the uh, recent spikes in um, accidents, collisions in particular areas effectively. Um, at the beginning of each meeting, and I would say generally for half of the meeting, and they're generally two hours, um, at the beginning of each meeting, we hold an information session where we discuss things as covered license plates with the executives. We discuss the fact that although covered plates are illegal to put on a vehicle anywhere in New York State, or put on a park vehicle anywhere in New York State, in New York City they're illegal to sell. We disseminate that information to our executives and we direct them to have their traffic safety personnel. Each precinct has a traffic safety team, which is generally three, four, or five officers and we direct them to have those traffic safety officers visit stores such as AutoZone or other auto parts stores that would sell these types of, of uh, devices and just inform them that they are illegal to sell in New York City. To first give them a warning and then to follow up to make sure that uh, they have in fact removed them from sale and if they are still there to summons them and notify our legal bureau for the issuance of a cease and desist letter. I can tell you we started pushing this about two months ago and already we've had about 25 to 30 visits throughout the city by our traffic safety personnel. So we're uh, encouraged by that. We think we're going to make some good ground on that. Also, City Hall, a while back, had been in conversation with the Transportation Bureau about this. And we had provided City Hall with a list of locations that were selling these things online, Amazon in particular. And City Hall had taken the lead on that and had been in conversation with Amazon to get them to stop selling um, these license plate covers, not just in New York City, but in New York State, because they're illegal anywhere in New York State. So I know that's being done as well. With regard to the enforcement that our officers and traffic agents are conducting out there, I can give you some data. Um, with regard to moving violations issued to vehicles with covered or obstructed plates, so far this year we're up 151 percent in moving violations, 6,321 so far this year versus 2,513 last year. With regard to summonses issued to motorcycles with covered or obstructed plates, we have 992 of those. I was unable to get data on where we stood so far last year to compare. Um, with regard to parking summonses issued to vehicles with covered or obstructed plates, um, we're up 0.8% over last year. 123,741 versus 122,813. Um, with regard to obstructed plate parking summonses to motorcycles, we have 786 of those. With regard to the towing of vehicles with covered or obstructed license plates, we're up 192% in that area. We have 1,104 tows of that type 
versus 351 last year. So the information is getting out to our police officers and our traffic agents. We think they're responding well. We think the actions taken by City Hall are going to be helpful in getting Amazon and other online retailers to stop selling these things to uh, people in New York City and the state. And I think the visits to the auto parts stores is going to be worthy and, and helpful as well. Thank you so much. That was exactly what I wanted to know. But I, but I also want, I mean, you testified that, you know, you've been looking at this for the past two months and there's been 25 to 30 visits and, and now you can quantify, and I really appreciate that data, of how many moving violations, uh, covered plates, all of the things that you were talking about that I'm making notes on. But explains to me and my colleagues, what is the process? So when you say that, what is the difference between a violation, uh, when do you tow? Um, just describe the process in which um, sure. NYPD traffic is going through identifying, then issuing a violation, and then what are the other steps that are taken? Sure. So our traffic agents are the ones that issue the parking summonses for the most part throughout the city. They issue roughly 8 million parking summonses per year. Our police officers are the ones who issue the moving violation summonses. So we make it a priority for our uh, traffic agents out in the field. And we direct them that when they come across a vehicle that has a covered license plate, it's illegal to park that car on a New York City street. So regardless of whether that vehicle is committing any other type of violation, we want them to summons that vehicle and tow it for that violation. So it doesn't have to necessarily be parked in a no standing or a no stopping. If it's otherwise parked illegally and it has a plastic uh, cover over that plate, we want them summonsing and towing the vehicle. They'll tow that vehicle into the tow pound. When the owner comes to reclaim that vehicle, we require the owner to remove that plastic from the plate before we return the vehicle. Right? The police officers, again, they're the ones who are out there observing traffic. They see vehicles with obstructed or covered license plates. They pull the vehicle over to the side of the road. They'll issue the appropriate summons to the, uh, to the motorist. Thank you. That's exactly what I would like to know. Um, does the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection enforce provisions, Local Law 22, on local businesses? Are there any licensed business that might be at risk of losing city licenses for selling materials that obscure license plates? That I don't, don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Okay, let's try and find an answer to that. Um, what other city agencies enforce local or state laws related to the unlawful operation of a motor vehicle with fraudulent or expired license plates? So fraudulent plates. Right. So a fraudulent license plate can be um, enforced by any police agency in the state. It's um, possession of a forged instrument. The issue is that when an officer pulls a vehicle over to conduct an investigatory car stop, there's a few things that we found out from our working group. One is very interesting. You know, when our officers conduct an investigatory car stop and they want to check a registration plate or a motorist license, they check it through the New York State Police Information Network, which we refer to as NICEBIN. NICEBIN has information on paper temporary plates from only 10 states within the country. The other 40 states do not provide New York State with that information. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for our officers in conducting those types of car stops. Um, I'll just, just, just give you some information on what we've seen. New Jersey was, was a problem from, with us for a while. One of the issues with that, New Jersey is not one of the states that provided information to NICEBIN. Our officers would literally have to call up the New Jersey Commission on Motor Vehicles to get information on a particular plate. They had a barcode on their plates that our officers could not scan. Well, a while back, I would say about a year ago, Jersey came up with a bar, I'm, I'm sorry, a QR code on their plates. So it makes it a lot easier for our officers now when they're conducting an investigatory car stop to determine the legitimacy of that plate. They literally can scan it and get all the information necessary to make sure that it matches the vehicle properly, et cetera. So that, that, that one thing that you had mentioned, who can conduct enforcement, any law enforcement officers can conduct enforcement on forged plates. Hope that answers your question. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, you've come prepared. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. <laughs> So what roles does the Auto Crimes Unit play in enforcement of provisions related to defaced license plates, and have there been any directives for officers on patrol to expand related enforcement? Yes. So Auto Crime, they really are our experts when it comes to the identification of fraudulent plates. 
they liaison with other states, other cities, other agencies, and are constantly updating our training material with regard to what's current, what's changed on certain plates. Um, they are trainers. They conduct uh, investigations based on information that they obtain, possibly from informants, or the council member had mentioned before, information he obtained online on um, temporary plates being sold. They follow up on those investigations. They affect arrests. One thing can lead to another. Uh, they might start with a paper plate that might end up taking them to narcotics or stolen cars, et cetera. So auto crime plays a big role in this for us. Thank you. And last question before I pass it along to um, Chair Brooks Powers. What efforts has NYPD or the city have done to coordinate with other jurisdictions to investigate out-of-state businesses that are suspected of issuing fraudulent, fraudulent license plates? So that's something that our legal bureau can certainly look into, uh, coordinating to, um, to get them to stop. Uh, you know, Craigslist and other, and other online retailers that offer these things for sale to serve them with the cease and desist letters as well. Thank you so much, Chair Brooks Powers. Thank you, and thank you for those responses. Um, I wanted to start by talking about Vision Zero and safety. Um, so in what ways do deface fraudulent and or expired license plates undermine street safety? And does the NYPD track how many street safety incidences involve vehicles with defaced fraudulent or expired plates? So far this year, there were four fatalities that involved paper plates. All of those plates were determined to be legitimate paper plates. They weren't fraudulent uh, or defaced. Um, okay. Certainly there is an issue involved with getting these plates off of the streets because, it, as you. we previously mentioned, when you commit a crime, and you have one of these license plates on your vehicle and they're not detectable, there's no way for a detective to follow up. It makes it much more difficult. So to that extent, it's a hurdle. So, but do you feel like they are more likely to be involved in hit and runs? I know it's kind of hard to tell if it's one that's not necessarily traceable and they leave the scene per se, but. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any data on that. I wish I did. Um, so I, I honestly can't say. I could dig a little deeper and get back to you on that. Uh. Um, are there Vision, relate, Vision Zero related summonses issued for deface, defaced, fraudulent, and or expired license plates? Like is yes. there one specific for that? Yes. So I can tell you very quickly, um, so far this year with regards to forged license plates, we've affected 1,777 arrests. And I broke it out by borough. And it turns out that the Bronx had the highest number of arrests with 488, followed by Brooklyn with 487, Manhattan 375, Queens 362, and Staten Island 65. When I took a look at the year ending 2022 versus 2021, we were up in arrests by 17%, 4199 in 2022 versus 3568 in 2021. I then looked at where we stood in 2022 versus 2019, because we often compare where we stand versus 2019 pre-pandemic. Pre We're actually up 257% in those type of arrests versus 2019, which is really good stuff. 4199 in 2022 versus 1178 in 2019. Mm -hmm. So we continually push this at our traffic safety forums that I mentioned. Every week we're talking to 12 executives from a particular borough. We discuss this, we discuss covered plates, fraudulent plates, and we, we think we're getting a good response from the officers. And what is that attributed to from your perspective? The, what specifically? In terms of the increase in um, the arrests. I think the fact that we explain to our officers the importance of, of getting these cars off of the street. Auto crime has pre prepared some really excellent training material that makes it easier for the officers to identify these plates out in the street. Um, because ordinarily, if you didn't have the material that would explain that, you know, for example, a, a, a Texas temporary tag would have seven digits that have to begin with a letter, right? Um, gee, when you pull over a Texas plate and you have one that begins with a number, you know that you have a fraudulent plate 
and you dig a little deeper. So these tidbits they got out to patrol, our officers out there in the field, they're more aware of what's a, 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 a fraudulent plate versus a legitimate plate. Just makes it a little easier for them. Um, and you mentioned that towing was much more effective. So why is the why is there more of the the summonses and arrests versus the towing? Since you find that to be more effective, because the summons the 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 arrests are affected by police officers stopping moving vehicles. So they take those people into custody. They charge them with forgery. That vehicle is taken into custody. The plate and as evidence. The vehicles that are towed are issued parking summonses by our traffic agents, and the traffic agent would then call a tow truck to respond to the scene to remove the vehicle. So they're towing that car, giving them a parking um, ticket, but are they, is the city getting the money back for the charging for the towing? So it's a couple of different things. If it's a covered license plate, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the city would, would get the money for the towing, certainly. And we would require- From the person who- Who comes to redeem the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So now we have the other vehicle, say with a temporary plate in custody. Um, let me just see if I can find a piece of data here, because there's an interesting piece of information. With the paper plate tows, so far this year, we have 1,084 vehicles towed with paper plates. Not necessarily fraudulent, but just vehicles with paper plates. Of that number, 356 came, were unclaimed and went to auction. So we always find that of the total number of paper plates, and this is historic, generally more than 25% are unclaimed by their owners and go to auction. And these are legitimate uh, temporary plates. Hmm. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting that they would leave yeah. their cars. Um, I think some of my, my colleagues are going to have some more follow-up questions on that. <laughs> that is um, pretty interesting yeah. um, data. Moving on to the New York City red light and speed camera programs. We know to face fraudulent and or expired license plates are utilized to evade red light and speed camera programs. Does DOT track the number of vehicles with such license plates who have evaded red light or speed cameras? Uh, good morning, Chair, and thank you um, for the question. Yes, um, so we do uh, we do track um, the number of vehicles that are um, uh, evading accountability for our automated enforcement programs, um, and you know it's something that um, it, it's a it's a small uh, portion of of the um, the total number of, of violators, but it but it's as you rightly noted and, and your colleagues rightly noted this is a concern that you know there are some people out there who are using these tactics to evade accountability for their violations. So how many in 22 versus 2021 have we seen and have we seen more evasion in the past few years? Right so it's a good question um, we did uh, you know going back to 2019, as the chief pointed out, that's a you know, place we like to look back to for kind of comparing today's behavior against pre-pandemic. We used to see fewer than 1% of uh, violations were um, untraceable due to uh, temporary plate, no license plate, or an unreadable or, or obscured license plate. Um, and in um, recent months, it has been it, it, this is a statistic that changes month by month, but it's been in the 5% range, I would say. Um, so it is elevated from where it was before the pandemic. Um, there's a number of things going on. Um, as you and your colleagues have pointed out, there are people with um, fraudulent plates, with covered plates, with temporary plates. There are also um, a, a portion of this is uh, people with motorcycles and mopeds that are not um, that are not bearing any license plates so that that's another uh, piece of, of, of that five percent 
And how much revenue does the city estimate is lost from evading enforcement of such cameras based on the numbers you have? Right. Um, it's, it's a difficult number to calculate because the violations that are rejected for um, not being traceable could, could, in theory, be rejected for another reason. If, if the plate was traceable, right, we have just to take a step back of how our programs work. So each automated enforcement program, despite the name automated, um, we have human reviewers, staff who review each violation um, before it's issued. So there are <clears throat> many violations that are, that are rejected for reasons having nothing to do with the license plate. Um, uh, for example, uh, a motorist enters a bus lane and um, blocks, blocks a bus that's approaching. However, an ambulance was passing in mm. the general travel lane. Our technician can see that on the video. They see that the, um, the motorist was, even though they did, in fact, you know, violate the bus lane, they were captured on camera, um, they, that, that violation would be dismissed because they are properly moving out of the way of an emergency vehicle. So there are cases like that, so it's hard to say that this, the, the number of violations that are um, untraceable actually would equate to exactly the number that, that were um, that were lost if, if the review process had gone through its full cycle. So I would say that probably be a little bit lower than the 5%, you know, if you really uh, went through the full review process on each of these. Um, I also like to share that we've been joined by Council Member Rivera. If a license plate is expired, is there a way of still identifying the violator and issuing them a ticket? Uh, yes, that's for me. Yeah, uh, either way. I mean, for the automated programs, yes. So if, if the, if the uh, license plate was properly registered but then expired, we can still trace it back to the owner, um, the registered owner, and that, that doesn't present a problem. But how does DOT handle it once the automated system triggers it? Do you work with DMV or NYP? Like, how does that work? Right. It, that's an excellent question. So there are, um, there's a few ways we can do the lookups to, to get the, um, the information about the, um, the registered vehicle owner. So if it's a New York State license plate and a New York State owner, there's a system we use called PREED that allows us to send the license plate number to the New York State DMV and we get the results back. Um, that's the simplest case. Um, then there are dozens of other states that participate in um, uh, a, a law enforcement data sharing program called NLETS. That's another avenue to get um, data back. And then there are uh, third party commercial providers that do um, DMV lookups uh, on our behalf for a, a small fee um, per lookup, such as LexisNexis is, is the biggest one that you've probably heard of. Um, you think of it as like a legal research tool, but it, they, they offer this service as well. So it's through either um, one of those lookup services directly from the New York State DMV or through the um, law enforcement um, data sharing system called NLETS. But what do you do with that information once you have it? So once we retrieve the vehicle owner information, we populate a violation notice with the name and address of the vehicle owner, the photograph of the vehicle in violation, the, um, the, the specific data about their violation, how many miles per hour they were traveling, the location. Um, that's presented to our reviewer team. They review all of the data, check it for accuracy, check, like I said, for you know extenuating circumstances or other things that could have um, inadvertently caused them to commit a violation. And then they affirm the violation. Um, we print and mail the violations. Um, and that's no, it. but how are you handling the fact that it's an expired license plate? That it's expired. It's a, so we, we 
issue the violation regardless of whether the, the but the violation is on the speeding portion but, yes, but correct. in terms of the expiration of the license plate what do you do with that information is it not handed over to the NYPD to then do something about it or does the right the person gets to still continue to drive with the expired license plate we just issue the speed bus lane or red light violation we don't we're not we don't have any authority to address the expiration issue no but that just shows that there may be a gap there is what it says to me because you're giving them that ticket they may pay they may not i mean they didn't renew their license plate and some maybe i don't know like yeah. maybe they forgot right right but even a notification to say this plate is expired please handle or maybe having a cross agency interagency um partnership in terms of that mm -hmm. would be warranted to be able to address that piece mm -hmm. yeah i mm -hmm. that's the good observation chairperson and we can certainly follow up on the expired plates i think you know typically the expiration notices are going out from the dmv so we didn't you know as a dot it's not normally our role but in terms of the follow-up with law enforcement no totally get that but sense. just when we think about getting those type of vehicles off of the roadway mm -hmm. wanting to you know have some type of a mechanism to do so now does the city support full autonomy over its red light and speed camera program uh chairperson that's an excellent question you know i think our um commissioner has been uh, in Albany, uh, you know, each session pushing for more and more um, authority to expand our enforcement programs. And we've been very um, successful in those uh, requests for expansion um, and built our program from, you know, you, you mentioned in your opening remarks, we, we launched the red light camera program in 1994 with just a handful of cameras and now we have um, over 2,000 speed enforcement cameras in school zones we have um, uh, close to 400 bus lane enforcement cameras uh, on fixed routes we have hundreds of uh, bus lane cameras that the MTA operates in partnership that are on their buses um, so that the we have had tremendous success growing um, these programs by leaps and bounds and yes we want to continue pushing for more authority to uh, operate um, you know reduce the the geographic restrictions that we have and um, there are other uh, flavors of enforcement that um, we think could be uh, valuable to pursue as well thank you for that and I'm, I'm hoping that the commissioner is looking at infrastructure as well like when having the conversations um, about the autonomy recognizing how they go hand in hand and cannot happen um, separate from one another so, um, switching over to NYPD enforcement um, how many tickets and arrests were issued made um, issued or made for defaced fraudulent and or expired license plates in 2022 um, compared to the previous years. I think you had mentioned it a little earlier, but I just wanted to. So you pulled together a few categories there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I will give you is for uh, fraudulent mm -hmm. or defaced plates. That was 1,777 so far this year. If we go back to prior years, when we compared 2022 to 2021, we were up 17%. 4199 versus 3568. And when we compared 2022 to 2019, we were up 257%. 4199 versus 1178 in 2019. Um, I'm going to yield my questions to allow my colleagues to ask some questions as well. Next, we'll have Council. Thank you so much, Council Member Felice. Quick questions. 
Thank you. Thank you, chairs, again for this hearing. I also want to thank all the different departments and agencies that work to remove ghost cars uh, from our streets, including the NYPD, the sheriff, uh, the sanitation department, and all others. Um, we need to tackle the use of these fake plates. Uh, we also need to tackle the sale of these um, plates. Um, very clear that people are setting, selling them very openly on Craigslist, eBay, even on Facebook Marketplace, even on Instagram. Uh, so just wondering, um, what is the NYPD doing to combat and prevent the sale of these fake plates? So as I mentioned before, Councilman, our auto crime division is responsible for these types of investigations. They get information on the sale of these types of, of plates online. As you mentioned, they actually go online and do inspections. They get information from debriefings where they arrest someone and they question them regarding criminal activity. Um, yeah, so they're the ones that actually do the investigations. I don't have any data right now regarding how many arrests they have made in those cases, but I can tell you the investigations are intercity investigations, interstate investigations in some cases. So yeah, they, they take the lead on that for us, and we're aware of the fact that they are available online for sale. Yeah, do we know how many investigations have been initiated? I don't have that data, but we can get that for you. Okay, do you know um, how often they check on these websites to see if people are setting these fake plates? <gasps> Excuse me, no I don't, we'll have to get that. I'm sure they, they do it frequently because it's part of their job, it's part of the reason they exist. Okay. Um, approximately how many cars with fake plates would you guess um, there are in our city? Based on the percentages, let's say one out, out of every 20 vehicles. That would be gross speculation on my part, I mean I really couldn't even Okay. venture a guess. I could give you the data on arrests, you know, summonses, um, but I really couldn't say. Okay. I've also heard based on my conversations with different uh, individuals that the NYPD and the sheriff has had issues with the towing given that there's not enough space uh, to actually tow every single ghost car in our city. Is that the case? And also, how many cars um, do we have space for towing currently? So How many lots? A couple of years ago, we lost the Manhattan Tow Pound, which was our largest tow pound in the city. Um, that was on Pier 76, 38th Street and 12th Avenue. We have three pounds now, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. So we were reduced by several hundred spots, the number of vehicles that we could tow and, and, and store. Why was it lost? I'm sorry? Why was it lost? Was, it, was the use changed I, or something? I think that it had to do with uh, Governor Cuomo wanting the space back. Okay, so we have three lots for the towing of Correct. cars. Correct. And approximately how many cars can each lot hold? I would say upwards of 200. Each lot. Maybe, maybe more than that. Again, I can get back to you with the exact data. I didn't bring that with me, but certainly I can get back to you on that. All right, so I guess we could safely say that we only have space for about 600 ghost cars for towing. More or less. 600 to 1,000, yeah, we want to be very... Cars in general. Okay. Um, how many complaints have been filed due to cars with either fake plates or no plates at all? Sorry, I don't have that data. Um, how many cars with fake plates has the NYPD told in the last year or two? Sorry, I know you mentioned a lot of numbers earlier today, just wanna yes. make sure. So again, with the forged plates, there were 1,777 that were taken into custody. Um, in, in the last year or two years? So far this year, taken into custody in conjunction with arrests. Again, 2022 versus 2021, there was 4,199. You have to assume that every one of those were taken into custody as well. Um, with regard to the towing of paper plates, um, we have so far this year, excuse me one second, please. 1,084. With regard to that number, our traffic agents have been trained in identifying forged paper plates. So although 1,084 vehicles with paper plates were towed into the pound, only 18 were determined to be forgeries. Okay, and uh, obviously we've had a drastic increase in the sale and the use of paper plates. Where are these plates mostly coming from? What states? I know New Jersey is top. Uh, yeah, the, I would say New Jersey was the biggest. We see Texas plates online as well. So I'd say those are the two biggest. 
Okay, and earlier today you mentioned we only have the information of about 10 states. Paper plane information into the nice bin from 10 states, correct? Okay, have we had conversations with the other states about potentially sharing the information we, and how has the conversations been? Yeah, we've had conversations with our uh, partners in the New York State Police about the state police reaching out to other states to get information, including into NISPIN, and we would have to follow up on that to see where they stand, but that's certainly a discussion we had, and the importance of it was stressed. All right, two final questions. I know my colleagues have questions. Um, what are the 10 states that have provided their information, their paper plate information? Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Michigan, New York, obviously, Ohio, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Okay. Final question. Um, I, think, I think we could safely say that there's two types of fake plates, right? You have uh, the super duper fake plates that you just print out of Google, and then you have the ones that you obtain through a, let's say, a fraudulent dealership. Um, so can you talk to us about the plates that are obtained through the fraudulent dealerships, the fictitious dealerships? Do they come with insurance, registration, et cetera? So there is a location in New Jersey that we're aware of where there are, and our auto crime division is aware of it, and they are in communication with their Jersey counterparts. There's a location in Jersey where there are maybe 100 LLCs registered that are dealers, and the bar in New Jersey to be a legitimate car dealer is set very, very low. Uh, for example, you have to have an office with a chair or two, you have to have two parking spots available, and if you have those things, you qualify as a legitimate car dealer. Now, if somebody goes to that car dealer and they receive, and they have access to the Jersey database to print out legitimate temporary permits. So if someone gets a permit from that legitimate dealership, the plates pretty much are legitimate plates, unless there's some type of fraud going on, but ordinarily they, they are legitimate place, and we've had this discussion with our auto crime division. Yeah, and um, what comes with those plates? Do they come with insurance, temporary insurance, temporary registration? Well, to op certainly to operate in New York State, you would have to have your car insured. So the plates being obtained from New Jersey, they do come with insurance, I guess temporary insurance. Yeah, to, to operate within New York, New, York, um, New York State, they would have to be insured. And if they're a New York State resident, they have 30 days to uh, register a car in New York State. Right, but I guess the question is, uh, are the plates that are being obtained, do they come with insurance and re temporary registration? So I don't know. I would imagine they do, but I can't tell you for sure that they would have to show proof of insurance to the dealership before they would give them a plate. I don't know. I do know in New York State, though, to drive, you have to have insurance. Yep. That. Sorry, I can't answer that for you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member. I would like to recognize Council Member Juan and Council Member Botcher. And next we'll hear from Council Member Farias. Hi, good morning, folks. Yes, yeah, good morning. Okay. Uh, just, I just have some questions off of the testimony and answers you've given, and if we can just run through them quickly. Um, initially, I, I wanted to know where are we finding most of our fake plates? And I'm sorry if you said this throughout your questions. Are they like parked in the street, through traffic violation, through accident? Like how are we coming to terms with I would these have to say plates? that based on the number that we found to be fraudulent based on towing paper plates, so the data shows that we towed 1,084 paper plates so far this year. When those plates were taken into our tow pounds and our traffic agents who have been trained in identifying fraudulent paper plates, they've only found 18 cases where they were forgeries versus okay. 1,777 arrests that were made by police officers who pulled over cars that had um, forged or altered plates on the vehicles. So I okay. have to say moving violations is the way we're getting them. Okay, so moving violations primarily, but we are also training traffic agents to identify that, yes. which is great. And then and then you, you also stated that what's been helpful is th that we've been notified of the plate differences and what to look out for in, in terms of within the PD of people going Correct. out. Do you think if the public had that information, it would increase the sh maybe street notifications, like parked cars that we'd be able to identify 
And do you think that would be helpful before we end up with a traffic violation pullover of a fraudulent license plate versus maybe in the neighborhoods being able to identify where they are? Possibly, but if you did that, you would also letting, you would be letting the people know who produce these mm -hmm. fake permits, what they're doing wrong so they could then correct them and have them appear to be legitimate, mm. you know? Okay, interesting perspective. Yeah. Um, and then I just have two more follow-ups on, on other things. Th I wanted to know in terms, and this was in relation to the cars that end up going for auction. This is yes. what we were talking about, the cars, cars going up for auction. Um, the thing that came to mind that I said to the chair out loud was, are those cars not registered? Their VIN numbers not registered, so we can't identify who own those cars and they're in violation? So they appear to be legitimate paper temporary res registrations. They're not fraudulent. We only have 18 of those. Right. My thought is that, and it's historic. I could give you data going back a few years. It's always around 25% of paper to paper plate toes remain unclaimed. So it's a historic number. What I'm going to do is when I get back to the base, I'm going to ask the tow pound to kind of break that out a little bit to see okay. how old the vehicles are. Are they more than 10 years old, 15 years okay. old? What, what, what type of condition are they in? I would think they're probably in not such great condition and people just figure, ah, you know what, I'd rather just let it go than pay to have it reclaimed. And Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I'll find out for sure. Great. Thank you. And I, I, I just had a thought around what's our relationship like with the DMV, especially with the gap in communication that we're having with expired registrations, and you kind of touched on it already, but um, do you think there's any way to maybe have us um, either figure out a way to get some of that revenue in in terms of for the state with expired, ex, with expired registrations versus us just hoping that at some point people will pay them. I could give you a quick piece of information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we've issued 204,000 parking violations mm -hmm. to vehicles with expired registration, which is up 2% from last year. So pretty much that's all going to be recovered, right? They're to legitimate cars. Moving violations, we're up 64% in moving violations issued to vehicles that aren't properly registered or with expired registration. And all that's going to be recovered. I think, as, as Josh and I had discussed before, it's the case where a car that's not registered goes to a speed camera or a red light camera, and there's really no mechanism in place to, to pick that violation up. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank you, folks, and thank you, chairs, for the additional time. Thank you, council member. Next, we'll hear from council member Carr. Thank you, chairs, chief, deputy commissioner. Good to see you. Um, I'm going to be asking these questions on behalf of my colleague, council member Natasha Williams, who had to depart. Um, in your response to your question from Chair Brooks Powers, you mentioned that traffic agents can initiate a tow uh, when they discover a vehicle with fraudulent uh, paper plates. Are they able to do that in real time upon their first discovery of a vehicle like that, even if there's no other violations known? Yes. And in terms of that, you know, how many are towed without the presence of a driver? On a, on a regular basis? I would say the majority, the vast, vast majority of vehicles are towed without a driver. Okay. Generally, the policy is when someone's sitting in a car, we instruct the, the traffic agents to give the person the opportunity to move for the most part. So generally, high, high, high percentage are unoccupied. Right. And we talked a little bit about before in your answer to Chair Felice about the capacity that the department has to hold these vehicles. Um, is the availability of a tow ever an issue? Um, I assume there's a lot of demands on, on the department's tow capacity. Mm -hmm. Is there discussion about expanding that capacity maybe through uh, additional contracting with an outside vendor? Do you need more tows internal to the department? What's the, the I, position I think, on that? I think what we need is a larger tow pounds. Um, yeah, I mean, we lost the Manhattan tow pound a few years ago, which hurt us. Um, but if we had more space to tow vehicles, like a quick, quick example, and just a quick aside, is that we know that large commercial vehicles parked overnight are a problem citywide, right? And we had um, explained at our traffic safety forum the difference in summonses that could be issued to the larger commercial vehicles, which is a code six, which carries with it a $250 fine for the first offense and a $500 fine for the second offense within six months by the same owner. So we can issue that summons to large 18-wheelers, the law lists four types of larger commercial vehicles, 
and we can issue, we've issued a lot of those summonses and we have a big increase in those summonses, the bottom line is the ability to tow them. And now in Queens South this year, we've done a couple of really great initiatives where we've towed like 80 of those vehicles over a couple of week period, but we were able to do that because the police borough commander was identify, was able to identify a location that could be secured that we could utilize for a several week period, and it was a very successful initiative. So the one thing we need is tow pounds in space. Okay, I appreciate that, and, and I think we, there's maybe some synergies for us to discuss because Staten Island has that same challenge that Southeast Queens has, as you discussed, and mm -hmm. you know we do have some space out on, in our borough, so maybe we can, we can discuss that. And mm -hmm. my last question on uh, my colleague's behalf is, do you have a breakdown um, of all of the tows or the, the incidences where there was a, a fraudulent or expired plate and the breakdown between the fraudulent end and then an expired temporary? Let's see if I have that. I have fraudulent, and as I had mentioned, we had towed 1,084 vehicles with paper plates so far this year, paper plates. Um, only 18 were determined to be forgeries okay. of that number. Thank uh, you. I hope that helps. Appreciate yeah. it. Yep. Thank you, Chairs. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Next, we'll hear from Council Member Holden. And before that, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Council Member Brannon has joined us as well. Thank you, Chairs. And uh, thank you, Chief, for all the information and all the hard work by the NYPD on this. So I just have a question on the language of the bill. When it's mentioned a uh, fraudulent license plate, does that also include a doctored or obscured license plate, let's say, there's very creative uh, ways where people block their license plate. I mean, I've seen people use a leaf, tape, paint, you name it. Does, does this bill, would this bill address that? The, the, the bill um, uh, 987. So we believe that the bill would address, would address doctored license plates. You do? Because that's a very important, you believe, but that's got to be, that's a very important issue. Because I see more so, doctored license plates, obscured license plates, than so, anything. I so, mean, I see that almost, I mean, I see it around precincts. I see it on, uh, I, from my office, I can see doctor. one out of maybe 15 cars that go by have an obscured plate with some kind of doctored plate. So this would be someone intentionally obscuring their plate. Right. Um, we all see it. Not Everybody necessarily, sees that. Not necessarily covered with leaves. Um, but we can work with the council to uh, come up with definitions or language um, to make this more clear in the bill. So again, if I paint over it, if I scratch it, because you name it, it's being done. Tape, Anything, if, so that's what has to be in the bill. That's why I'm not on this bill, because I'm not sure if that's the case here. That it's, the language should be, for any obscured, I would add obscured, I would add doctored, I would add all the language that if you hide it somehow, or even if it's illegible, that that mm -hmm. becomes, that the, you know, obviously like a camera can't pick it up, or a toll can't pick it up. That, that's a, you know, obscured plate. And Councilman, that's a, that's a good point because we do see that. Um, I've seen it out there myself. And the language 402 of the VTL does make that illegal, the way it's worded. So you can't have any numbers or letters covered up. They have to be, I think it says clearly readable or clearly discernible. So it is illegal. Our officers do take action in those cases. And it's a great point. But I, I think also that in one of the hearings we had, the penalty right now for that is $65. That's correct. Right? So That's it correct. actually, it does pay to do that in the city of New York right now with the current penalties. Because uh, how much are tolls? Tolls can be $65 and you, can, you could use that in one day and, and make it back. So even if you do get caught, it's $65. That's why the bill that, you know, the current bill, if it covers that and it, and it obviously would be a $500 fine, that at least starts to address it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for all of you testifying. Special shout out for Inspector Kinsella from Staten Island. It's good to see you. 
Thank you, Chair Brooks Powers and all my colleagues that have been here. We're going to move to um, public testimony. Thank you so much. Thank you. You want to sit? Okay, next we'll be turning to public testimony for in-person panelists. Please come up to the dais once your name has been called. For virtual panelists, we'll be calling individuals one by one to testify. Uh, we'll be limiting te public testimony today to two minutes each. Please begin once the sergeant has started the timer. And for virtual panelists, once your name is called, a member of our staff will unmute you and the sergeant at arms will set the timer and give you the go ahead to begin. Uh, please wait for the sergeant to announce that you may begin before delivering your testimony. Um, and I'd like to call up to the dais uh, Eric McClure and Danny Perlstein. Eric, you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Eric McClure. I'm the executive director of Streets PAC. Uh, I want to thank the co-chairs, uh, Chair Hanks and Chair Brooks Powers for hosting this hearing today. Um, ghost cars, vehicles with fake, obscured, or illegally covered license plates are a serious and widespread and seemingly worsening problem in New York City. Untraceable and unreadable plates allow drivers to flout speed and red light cameras and electronic tolls, an issue that will only compound with when congestion pricing goes into effect. As Jesse Coburn has reported in a wide-ranging investigative series for Streets Blog, the proliferation of license plate che cheating cost the MTA, the Port Authority, and New York City more than a combined $100 million in lost toll and ticket revenue in 2022. And that's not the worst of it. Drivers of ghost cars have also left behind a trail of death and destruction. Isaiah Benloss, a former student of Council Member Rita Josephs, was struck in 2020 by the driver of a car with temporary New Jersey plates and later died. The driver was never caught. Davina Afakoba, a 10-year-old constituent of Chair Brooks Powers, was killed by a driver of a car with temporary Texas plates early last year. That driver received only a summons. Sadly, Isaiah and Davina were only the tip of the iceberg. According to NYPD, more than two dozen New Yorkers were killed by drivers of cars with temporary plates over the past two years, and 40% of those plates were fake. Cars with counterfeit or unreadable plates have been used in the commission of crimes, including murders. And while according to Coburn's reporting, the NYPD towed 3,300 vehicles with paper plates last year, they're barely putting a dent in the problem. For all the preceding reasons, we strongly support Councilmember Feliz's Intro 987, which would make it unlawful to operate a motor vehicle in New York City with a fraudulent license plate, fake temporary plate, or expired license plate. The legislation also sets a reasonable graduated fine schedule, which includes a curing period for, replace, for replacing expired plates. The proposed law would not put anyone in jail, but the penalty should be substantial enough to curtail a fair amount of the illegal activity, assuming the law is adequately enforced. We also support Councilmember Feliz's related bill, Intro 988, which would prohibit the sale or distribution of fraudulent plates, including fake temporary plates, by updating Section 10182 of the City's Administrative Code, which already prohibits the sale of license plate covers and sprays. The bill would also impose substantial fines, $1,000 for first offense and $2,000 for subsequent offenses, which come out quickly for someone engaged in the illegal business of selling fake plates. Taken together, we believe these bills will help put a dent in the spread of fraudulent license plates, which will both make the city streets safer and help reduce toll losses. We urge that both bills be passed by the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure and Committee on Public Safety and the full council as soon as possible. 
We also would strongly urge the creation of a task force that would include the NYPD, the New York City Sheriff, New York State DMV, and regional and federal transportation and law enforcement authorities to address the scourge of ghost cars. Jesse Coburn's reporting reveals that the problem is widespread and crosses many state lines, and solving it will require a coordinated and holistic effort. Lastly, we support Intro 1011, Chair Brooks Powers' bill that would require police to distribute information about reduced fare programs to persons arrested or summons for fare evasion. While not everyone who jumps a turnstile is doing so purely for economic reasons, the city's fair fares program is greatly undersubscribed, and access to half-price fares may help to encourage people to pay to ride public transit. It's certainly worth a try. We'd even support an effort to give drivers whose ghost cars are impounded information about Easy Pass. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, and I really appreciate the feedback in terms of the task force, because that's where I was going when it became evident that there's some gaps between the state and the city agency. So thank you for that. Good morning, chairs, council members. My name is Danny Perlstein. I'm the policy and communications director at the Riders Alliance. Thank you so much for having me. Um, on the Fair Fares Information Bill, obviously, we're strongly supportive. Uh, we believe that uh, this is an important pathway to getting the word out about Fair Fares. At the same time, we believe it pairs incredibly well with an expansion of the program that we believe will allow it to reach its full potential, and we're so grateful for the council and to Speaker Adams for supporting that expansion, and we hope to see it in the budget concluded this week. Um, at the same time, we are supportive of Councilmember Felice's bills, as described by my colleague um, Eric. McClure and, and as you know illustrated the need for by uh, the website streets blog both Jesse Coburn's series and of course the editor Gersh Kunzman's criminal mischief series of going around town and correcting ghost, ghost plates and and obstructed plates you know at the same time we feel strongly that, that this is about equity right it's about safety it's also about equity um, you know drivers using ghost plates are abusing a privilege to operate and maintain a car in public space and they're yet another obstacle to the fast and reliable service that bus riders so sorely need um, bus riders in general need a bold approach to priority on the busiest streets, and busways, of course, are the strongest remedy um, that the city has in its toolkit, and busways have been implemented successfully in the last four years in areas of Manhattan, northern and southern Manhattan, and eastern Queens, and of course in, in now in downtown Brooklyn, and we're looking forward to Flatbush Avenue. But nowhere is a busway more clearly indicated than on Fordham Road in the Bronx, where 85,000 riders every single day use what is in essence the Cross Bronx Expressway of bus routes, the BX12 SBS and the four other routes that run on Fordham Road. And, you know, we believe that, again, the strongest remedy is the one that's indicated here. You know, obviously there have been calls for balance, but balance can't come in the form of an obsolete street design that's 15 years old that hasn't been implemented in the other boroughs in a decade and a half and really would shortchange the 85,000 daily riders from Upper Manhattan and the Bronx that rely on Fordham Road to get across town. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chair Brooks Powers, if, if I may add one thing, um, I, I did want to underscore what Councilmember Holden said about the obscured and defaced plates. It, it's a, a really important issue. Um, a $65 fine clearly is not deterring anyone from doing that, and if Councilmember Feliz is open to it, uh, amending the bill to include language regarding obstructed, uh, ob obstructed or, or defaced plates I think would be very beneficial. Thank you for that feedback. We'll bring that back to, oh, the, oh I got you, go on. And he can speak on it right there. Actually, sure. Uh, we'll definitely look into that. I think that um, that's already in the bill, but uh, the big question is what are the, the penalties? Is it just $20 for completely covering a plate, or is it something that would actually deter people? So we'll definitely review the language and modify it if needed. Thank you. Let's include that, thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. We'll leave it open for anyone else who wants to. One online? That's why I said I was going to leave it open. Um, we'll turn to Steve Vaccaro, who's joining us virtually. Your time will begin. Thanks very much, um, and thank you. Um, thank you, Chairs Brooks Powers and Hanks for the opportunity to present evidence today concerning the problem of fraudulent and defaced license plate that the two bills, intro 987 and 988, are intended to address. 
I'm an attorney representing vulnerable road users, pedestrians and cyclists against the motors who strike them, and I'm here to sound an alarm. There has been a dramatic pullback in traffic law enforcement against dangerous driving. Drivers know it, and they increasingly are turning to fraudulent or defaced plates to evade responsibilities for tolls, for parking violations, and for the harm they cause when they strike New Yorkers. A recent landmark investigative report by Jesse Coburn specifically focused on so-called ghost tags, temporary paper license plates or tags issued by car dealers not in connection with the sale of a vehicle. They cannot be traced to any vehicle, these ghost tags. Coburn learned that hundreds of fraudulent temporary tags are issued by dozens of registered auto dealers who list as their business address a vacant lot in Bridgeton, New Jersey. In fact, no cars are sold out of that lot, and New Jersey is extremely lax in enforcing the rules against those dealers selling tags apart from any vehicle. One of my clients, Raymond Wallace of Brooklyn, was struck on May 8th of this year while operating a motorized scooter with a driver who had ghost plates on issued by a dealership called Direct Auto Wholesale located at that vacant lot in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Mr. Wallace went under the car and he was dragged half a block before the driver stopped. Luckily he lived, but he suffered a fracture to his humerus, lost income and many other consequences. Police were there. They happened to be right there at the scene. They stopped the driver and when they checked his information, they found out he didn't have a license. His license had been revoked for DWI and other violations, but he was driving a car given to him by someone in New Jersey Time who expired. supplied him with the car and who, and who bought these fake ghost tags from Direct Auto Wholesale in Bridgeton, New Jersey. New York streets are being flooded with these fraudulent tags that are issued by these ghost dealerships for $100. And I will include in the written version of my remarks the citation to the police accident report, to the filed complaint against the driver and the auto dealership that we are bringing for negligent entrustment of these temporary tags and of this vehicle to this driver, as well as um, the citation to the article by Mr. Coburn. But this is, is a problem that is growing by leaps and bounds and and dramatically needs to be addressed by intro 987 and 988. And I would urge that the law by its terms have extraterritorial effect to reach the furthest possible reach it can into auto dealerships in New Jersey. There's a basis for this in the case law that I've read in New York, that if you are sending a vehicle with these temporary tags into the other state- Sir, if you can you wrap can up your testimony, please. Thank you. Thank you. Next, if there's anybody present in chambers who wishes to testify, who hasn't signed a slip, please see the sergeant at arms in the back. Um, we have one witness remaining, uh, call to the dais, Alex Stein. Mic on, last time I didn't have it on. You guys are crazy, y'all never turn it on. I got Selvina, got the camera out. I'm primetime 99, so I sued y'all, and you guys are auto-settling because you guys don't believe in free speech, and I'm a pimp on a blimp. And I wanna say, I love New York. This Pride Month has been so great. I've had so much anal sex. Like last night at that parade, I learned this new song, you ready? Jizz on my face, jizz on my face. I need that jizz post haste. Stick that dick deep in my shit. I want it in my poopy zone. I want to be a poopy clone. I love poop and gay sex. Pride Month is the very best. That's why I stick it deep in your butt. Yes, that blood's not from a cut. It's from the insertion, cause I stick it deep. Cause I am an anal super freak. I love free speech. It's so great when I walk down the street and see some gay sex plate in front of my face. I love gay sex and the taste of jizz sticking to my mouth. Jizz, jizz, I love it so much. I love pride. It's the best month. I love pride. I love it so much. So I learned that song last night at Pride. My girl AOC was there. AOC! I miss you, baby. I'm sorry, please unblock me. 
I want to talk to you on Twitter. And also, Oswald, Oswald, I had some anal last night you would be jealous of. And I know you guys are all homosexuals because everybody in the city is a homosexual. And I love it. I just, when the guys, they whip out their things and they slap it on my face, it brings me back to the locker room. The locker room with Leah Thomas, my favorite pro athlete. Leah Thomas, I'm swimming for you. I'm swimming for the marginalized. I'm swimming for the ones that can't swim for themselves. I'm prime time 99. I'm a pimp on a blimp. And I love gay sex. And I love it with a dildo. I love it with a person. I love it with a transgender. I love transgenders. I love transgenders. I love transgenders. I love them. Thank you. It's primetime sign on Instagram. Oh, and the cities run like shit. Okay, we have one final witness, uh, Jason Fromowitz. If you want, if you want to slide down. Hey, uh, my name is Jason Fromowitz. Um, I'm a I uh, wanted to provide my perspective on uh, the issues that were talked about today as a resident of Manhattan. Um, that first of all, I wanted to thank the committees for uh, addressing this issue of uh, vehicles with uh, improper license plates. Uh, from my perspective, it's a pervasive issue uh, across the city, um, and I've just seen it continue to grow over the last several months. Um, so I wanted to uh, uh, su express my support for uh, bills uh, 987 and 988, uh, but I also wanted to encourage uh, the council and uh, these committees to uh, address vehicles with missing and completely missing plates, which I don't believe is uh, addressed by the by this bill, uh, as well as specifically calling for uh, action for vehicles with the face plates, which I also uh, I know was also raised, but I saw as, as lacking in the the current proposed bills. Um, additionally, I was hoping uh, to encourage the committee to uh, look into and address the lack of enforcement given. Uh, the existing illegality uh, of much of what was discussed today and how the there's a, there appears to be an issue with uh, enforcement rather than lack of existing of, of existing laws and penalties. Um, and that's all I had. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, I just want to acknowledge for the record witnesses who signed up to testify, uh, Kaylee Olenek and Don Dontarius Ingbom. Um, back to you. Thank you so much. This hearing is adjourned.